Okay, um, I, apparently there is a secret level for, or a secret exit for this level because, um, I know one of the exits just leads you to the quicksand path, and then the other one takes you to the cannon, so I will have to be on the lookout for another exit, unfortunately. I can't imagine it being too hard to find, though. And uh, here we have an awesome platforming level. I kind of like these levels. I don't know about you guys, but when they do levels like this, I really enjoy playing them. Even though they can be kind of gimmicky sometimes. But sometimes gimmicky d gimmicks don't have to really be a bad thing. It kind of depends on the gimmicks themselves. And I feel bad. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I, f I feel bad for those Koopas who fell off the ledge, though. That's another thing I like about this game, is uh, whenever you're playing through a level, the Koopas actually dance to the music. Which is kind of cute. Oh, and those things down here, these are propeller blocks. So if you don't have a propeller mushroom, you can use these to also fly as well. But, you know, it might be better to have an actual propeller mushroom. So you don't have to worry about carrying it throughout the entire level. Okay, so we don't have much left of this level. Oh, gee, it's not these things. Oh, fire chomps. Dang it! Okay, wait, there might be a propeller mushroom in here, actually. Okay, good, there is. But yes, good old fire chomps. They can be very annoying, or they can be a pretty cool enemy. Unfortunately, though, they're very annoying most of the times. Especially in stages like these, where you have to concentrate on what you're doing. But, eventually the fire chomps will disappear after he uses up all of his, uh, fireballs on his tail, so you can kind of try to avoid it. And usually they kind of move in the same pattern throughout their appearances, so you don't, don't have to worry about them too much. Still, though, they can still be very annoying if you're not careful, and... Ah, oh, dang it. Oh, well. I'm wondering if I can still get the secret exits. I'm gonna go ahead and try it, even though it seems kind of risky. Okay, there we go. That wasn't too hard. And... Uh, there we go. So, once again, like the case of World 2-4... I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut some footage back to where I was when I found the secret exit, and I'll be right back when I get there, so see you guys then. And yes, this just takes you to the warp cannon of the world. Okay, I think we're at the end right now. Dang it, I would lose my propeller mushroom. I would. It seems like something I would do. But either way, we have reached the end, so hooray for that. Although these platforms are going to prevent me from trying to get a 1-up, but they failed. So now I think we're actually ready to um, go fight the boss of World 2. Or actually, wait, no, I still have to get that star coin in that one level. Let me just make sure there's nothing else on the map. Okay, yeah, I have to go get that star coin now. This shouldn't take me too long. I have an idea of where the star coin is, so... Yeah, don't worry about it too much, so... I'm gonna go ahead and see you guys at where you need to be to find the star coin, so see you guys there. Okay, I'm honestly not surprised I missed this, because I actually missed this on my very first playthrough. And um, I found it perfectly on my second playthrough, so... It's only logically that I'd miss it on my third playthrough, so... Yeah, there's a secret beanstalk right there. And, of course, that beanstalk takes you to a room where the last star coin is, so... Or no, the second star coin is. 
All you gotta do is just uh, wait till you get to this point, grab the POW block, and then right here, just throw it. And there we go. And then just drop. And that'll take you to about this point right here, which is fairly close to the end of the level, so we're almost done. And there we go. Okay, so... Uh, we've done it. We've collected... Well, we haven't collected all the star coins, because we have the last level still, but... We have collected everything in this world besides the final world, or fi final level, the castle level. So we are going to go there next. What dangers will we find in this castle? Well, I'm not going to fight that again, so... Let's not go this way. Let's go the shortcut that we actually unlocked from 2-4. And we'll end up just right here. So here we go, Roy's castle. This is a castle. But it's not Roy's one. I love that song for some reason. Okay, so um, this castle, if you haven't played Super Mario Bros, the original, and I'm sure it's also appeared in other games as well, this is the maze. And unfortunately I just screwed myself out of getting the uh, first star coin. I'm thinking about actually killing myself and going back to the beginning, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just get the, ca I'll just get the coin off screen or something. Or not get it off screen, but you know, go back and get it. And cut some footage out. But um, yeah, uh, in Super Mario Bros., there was a level where you have to take all the right paths, whether it's the upper path, middle path, or lower path, and depending on what path you choose, determines um, if you go farther in the level or not. So, like in the case of the first part, you have to take the top path. And if you don't, then you have to go back to the very beginning of the level. Or not re not really the beginning of the level, but the beginning of the loop of where you actually failed that part. So yeah, that is how this castle works. It's a pretty interesting castle. I do like when they whenever they use this little mechanic in the castle levels. It can be kind of irritating, though, because um, they were very, very precise in the original Super Mario Bros., and uh, Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, where some of the paths you have to take are just ridiculous. But, for the most part, though, I mean, they're not really that hard. Just, you know, test out different paths while you're going through it. They give you plenty of time, and you shouldn't really take the same path twice. But yeah, they give you ample time. Unfortunately, that was the wrong path right there. I had to actually hit that P-switch first. Even though I did that, but... You have to collect these coins before the blocks reform. And this should take me to the very end. But yeah, I believe the path is top, middle, bottom, middle. And that should take you to the end. Not a very difficult pattern to remember. At least in my opinion. And here we are, the doors to Roy's castle, or Roy's boss room, Roy's lair, whatever you want to call it. Now actually, this boss kind of reminds me of uh, Lemmy and Wendy's battle in Super Mario World. It's not the same, like it's not really even close to being the same, but... It involves the Koopaling going into different pipes, and then he'll emerge out of a random pipe, and then you have to do damage to him when he comes out. And watch out for the shockwave attack! Uh, I have to remember to avoid that next time. Like that. But yeah, it's not a very hard boss fight. I actually watched my cousins try to do this, and they had a really, really hard time. Although they're only like, you know, six or seven years old. 
They don't know all the ins and outs of platforming at a young age like that. Sometimes you do, but not always. Keep in mind that they're also kids that don't play video games very often either, so... Yeah. Okay, there we go. World 2 completed. Besides that star coin, but I'll get that in a second. So let us head off to World 3. But not before the uh, Peach cutscene. Where Bowser Jr. makes a funny face at us and leaves. He's such a jerk. I'll have to take away his toy train. Not that I would know he have he has a toy train or anything. Okay, so there we go. World 2 completed, the desert world, and now we're on to the ice world. And this world's Koopaling is... Lemmy Koopa. I might have actually called uh, Larry Koopa, the boss of World 1, Lemmy Koopa by mistake in one of my videos. I remember watching it back and hearing that, so I do apologize for that mistake early on. Not much I can really do about it now, but yeah, my bad. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and collect the star coin in Roy's castle. And after I get that, I'll uh, join you guys back in the ice world. So, I'll see you guys then. Okay, you can apparently also get the coin that way. But it's a lot easier to just get it by uh, taking the middle path when you get to the first loop. So, that's the way you're supposed to get it. But you can also get it by, you know, jumping the gun a little earlier and actually getting it that way, the way I just showed you, so... Yeah, there are two different ways you can get that star coin. The way I did, if you want to get it faster. But you can also do it this way and just, you know, get the coin from right here by taking the middle path. So, yeah, that's how you do it, so... I'm gonna cut the video right here and see you guys back at the Ice World. See you then. Okay, here we are at the... Ice World, World 3. Let us get started with this now. Now, World 3 actually introduces a new power-up, which I think we'll get right off the bat. The Penguin Power-Up, the Penguin Suit, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the Penguin Suit is pretty much just like an ice flower, in that you get ice balls. But it does have a few other features as well, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But yeah, you can do stuff like that. You can actually slide on the ground and then bash through blocks. It's a pretty helpful power-up, but you don't get to see it very much or use it very much. Which is kind of a shame, but I can kind of understand why as well. And you can also use it to um, uh, swim through the water a lot easier. I don't know if uh, easier is the correct word, but you swim differently when you're in water. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I have to be very careful right here. But that shouldn't be a problem, so there we go. Now let us continue. And also, whenever you're walking on the ice in the penguin suit, you won't slide around as much. When you're any other form of Mario, you will slide around, so... You know, the penguin suit is a very helpful ability you can use in this world. Or at least in some of these levels. Okay, let's see if we can do this. I believe there's a star coin you can get. I think. Yes, there is. Okay, there we go. I'm going to grab that one up first, though. And there we go. And I believe this is the where the last star coin is. Oh, geez. This one can be kind of a pain to get if you're not careful. Okay, that wasn't a problem. That could have been a pain, though. That could have been. It wasn't, but it could have been. And yeah, that was a pretty easy level. I believe the ending is just right here. I know I probably didn't have to jump right there, but, you know... I try to be careful when I play my Mario games. And 
and we're up to 60 lives. Trust me, we are never going to need that many lives. I mean, if you seriously counted from here on out till the rest of the playthrough, I probably won't die 60 times. I know I'm kind of, you know, <laughs> I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of stretching that a little bit because, you know, let's play Curse and stuff like that, but I'm honestly that confident that I shouldn't die 60 more times. I'm not saying I won't die, though. I will definitely die. I mean, that's kind of a given at this point. But I don't think I'll need 60 lives at all. Okay, so here we have Bullet Bills. We should be familiar with them. Considering they're in a lot of Mario games. So I'm not going to explain what they do, because, well, it's kind of obvious what they do. Uh, we do have an Ice Brother, though. Which, um... I don't remember if these guys are new or not in this game. They're probably not. There's probably an Ice Bro I'm not thinking of in another game, but... They're essentially just Fire Bros with Ice Fireballs instead. That's really all they are. Whether they're new or not, they're not really... Like, the idea behind them is not really new at all. And yeah, I didn't make very good use of that star man. I think you're supposed to use it when there's a lot of bullet bills on the screen. There really wasn't in that case. And yeah, I'm purposely ignoring the ice flower because, well, I have the penguin suit. I mean, that's pretty much what the ice flower does, what the penguin suit does. And I really hope I'm not missing any star coins. And that was kind of stupid, but I didn't want to get hit by anything, and I'm still getting hit by stuff. Is there anything down here? Okay, there is. Okay, I thought there was. This is probably where one of the star coins are. Oh, jeez. Okay, this is where I need the ice flower. Or a ice flower. Well, I didn't need it, but, you know... It would have made this part a lot easier if I did have it. But whatever. Whatever. Okay, is the ice is the ice bro back? Yes he is, okay. I am going to avoid him as much as possible. <laughs> I also love how whenever the uh, bullet bills run into each other, they kinda shift up and down. Like that. That's kinda cool. Kind of a neat little effect, I guess you could say. And thank you, Ice Bro. You actually helped me out right there. Okay, let's try not to die. Surely that's not asking too much. And there we go. 61 lives. I'm doing pretty good at the Ice World so far. This is kind of a brush of fresh air, because the second world was actually kind of difficult in some aspects. Oh, and we have a ghost house. The very first ghost house of the game, I believe, too. Uh, you guys probably can safely figure out that I do love ghost houses because of my obsession with Super Mario World. And indeed, that is the case. I do love ghost houses for that one and only reason. Basically, if there was anything uh, made in Super Mario Mario World, then I like it immediately. Because I seriously love Super Mario World, if you couldn't tell. I'll most definitely be talking about that game a lot in this project. Okay, come on. I want to make sure I don't die. The good thing about Ice Bros is that, they're f that, that their ice balls don't go very far. That is the good thing about them. But they also shoot two at a time, so... You have to watch out for that. 